Just, it's, just do it. Just click the damn button. You're gonna f succeed, and you're gonna, you're gonna make all your fucking dreams come true. <sighs> moving to Japan. So, the moment has finally come. This plan has been canceled for three years. From the two most unlikely events, a blood clot in 2019, and then a worldwide pandemic. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. The coronavirus officially reaches pandemic proportions. It's always you, coronavirus. You're an absolute nightmare. And Japan has kept their borders closed ever since. To shut down Japan's border to foreigners from all countries. Until now. They might not be open for tourists yet, but they are for visa holders. So, I'm going to be moving out for the first time ever. All the way to the other side of the world, all by myself. And I wanted to take you guys along for the ride because it is literally insane how much stuff you have to prep for a move like this. Let alone when there's a bunch of new COVID rules. Finding a place to live, going through all the hoops to just get the damn visa. Prices averted! Wrapping up all my unfinished projects. I can't breathe. <laughs> Let the chaos begin. So with my tuition paid for, it was time for the complicated tasks. Basically, the school and government get you to do all these things a month before you're supposed to land in Japan, including booking your flights, which I found unnecessarily stressful. Yeah, it's finally booked, but also it's only half, damn it. So everything seems to be happening all at once. Flights went from like 900 something dollars to all of a sudden 1200 overnight, so that's great, but we figured out that if I fly from here to Vancouver and then spend a night in Vancouver and then go to Vancouver to Tokyo, then that could somehow be cheaper. It's not cheaper by a lot, but it's cheaper enough to be okay with it because I'd rather sleep over at a hotel or something in Vancouver than sleep in the middle of the airport. Just you wait. I guess now the next step is try to find somewhere to live. Thankfully, I was used to having a small space at home, so I wasn't nervous about being in a share house. There's so much paperwork! It was choosing one. This next place, though, that I was looking at with my sister yesterday, it looks like they're specific on south-facing windows, which is good because, like, I need good lighting for my bullet journal videos especially. For anybody who else ever wants to move to Japan, I recently learned that if you're a girl, it's best to have a apartment on the second floor or higher because apparently Japan has a stalking problem. Mikan Mandarin talked about when she got stalked. So I lived on the first floor and he was just like knocking and I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like he could go through the window. I was freaking out. And he was saying like, hello, hello, obviously because he just heard me speak English, which I pretended I didn't speak. And I was like, oh my gosh, this man is going to break my window and kill me. I was so scared. I ended up moving because of the incident. I don't really want to have that issue. So I click on anything higher than the first floor. The school sent me a lot of options. So I did the only reliable thing I know, make a chart. Which one has the most pros and cons and if those pros are worth the extra money or not, you know? So the fact that I'm doing this is actually extremely nerve wracking. <laughs> Moving to Japan is um, starting to get to me and I think it's gonna hit harder once I actually like book more and more things. I'm just doing my best to try to keep them cool. And now that my parents are home, I'll have it now! Okay, thank you! Gonna have a snack. <laughs> so the next major step was getting my student visa. Now, thankfully, I feel like I'm th saying thankfully a lot. This was slightly less complicated than getting a work one. Since I went through GoGo Nihon, all I had to do was send in whatever paperwork the school asked for, and they do the government stuff. However, once you get said paperwork approved, you have to find the closest Japanese embassy and mine was three hours away. Okay, that was stressful. Showed up on my appointment, I got 10 here 10 minutes early with all of my paperwork, ended up slightly misfiling a few things, but she straightened it out pretty quickly, and my picture that Richard took of me almost didn't work, which was not great, but she took it anyway, and she didn't ask for my COE, so I was a little confused, but she told me to have it mailed back to me. I'd have to go to the post office and bring back the family slip, so I was like, oh my god, they're closing in literally a half an hour, so my dad and I rushed 
to Canada Post. The lady there was super, super nice, but she gave me an express post one. So I got out of there just in time and got here just like 10 minutes before close. And I gave her my COE and she's like, oh my God, this makes you have an entirely different visa. I'm glad you gave me this. So that could have been a really bad, bad mistake. So everything's settled, everything's good so far. I did receive my visa thing. So hopefully it got approved. So let's open this together. Ooh, I almost forgot my passport. Ugh. Okay, that was so not nice looking, but that's fine. I'm confused. Did it get approved? <gasps> yes, it did. Okay, I have a visa. Probably shouldn't be showing this on camera. Okay, but I got it. Wow, this is really weird. <laughs> Can't I have a visa for Japan? That's a weird sentence. <laughs> Oof, crazy, okay. Okay, now next problem is the medical record kit. Long story short, I'm still on blood thinners to prevent another blood clot from happening. So I knew I needed to get that approved by the government and turns out one extra thing that I didn't see coming. Okay, I thought I was gonna be done after this, because that's what I remember her saying. But nope, so I've got one last thing left, and so it's the weaning off thing. I gotta turn this off, ugh. It says four weeks, and then four weeks, then one cap. It reads like radio instructions. See what I mean? Kind of confusing. So I'm gonna have to send this to Japan. So now the yuck, I can't even pronounce it. The, basically the medical certificate that I got sent to Japan has to change, even though I just emailed them about it last night. Uh. Now, despite doing the whole Marie Kondoing thing back in 2019, I knew I still had way too much stuff. Now this doesn't have to go into a landfill, I'm very happy. And I get to try and figure out how to fit it in my closet. <laughs> Good luck. Since this isn't a permanent move, I didn't have to worry about going true minimalist. However, I knew I was limited to only two suitcases, and the heavier they were, the more expensive they were gonna be. Plus, being a really indecisive human does not help. Trendy and comfy. Trendy and comfy. So I knew I needed extra reinforcements. Thank God for Haley. You either have to choose between them or one of them has to be your extra shoe, which also means then you cannot bring your Donald Duck ones. Yeah. Tricking is so hard on me, oh my God. Yes. Oh, <laughs> see, this is why I need help. Yeah. Oh, of course. For a year, we won't film together for a year. Ah. All right, so I am still packing. I think it's been like day four or five straight of this. It's a lot of Tetris to try to get everything in this freaking bags, but I wanted to talk to you guys about this little thing I've been doing since uh, this whole Japan thing has basically started from the ground up. One of the things in Jap Japanese culture is to present a small gift. If you know if someone does something nice for you or for new neighbors, if you're moving into a new place, things like that. When Trisha and I went at the dollar store here, they have a bunch of cute, Canada merch things for Canada Day every year. Because I wanted to do that again, the, when I was originally supposed to move, I ended up buying a bunch. And so began the tradition of buying more of these bears and cute merch Canadian things every time I had to wait another year to go. I just basically bought a shit ton of them. Like, look how cute that is. They're gonna love that. I also grabbed a bunch of Canadian little pins. Let's see if it'll actually focus. Oh wow, good autofocus. Yeah, packing hopefully will be done tonight. So with my packing sort of complete, the main obstacle in my way was finishing the three last makeover projects I started last year. As my older viewers know, I've been working on renovating Richards, my photographer studio in his basement, and it ended up taking way longer than both of us anticipated. Yes! Oh. Hey. Ow! Oh. <laughs> Had to get us one last time. Yeah. I knew he needed to hire someone else to maintain it while I was gone, so I knew I needed to finish it, and film the final B-roll for those videos. Thank God I had help. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life, we <laughs> Sure you don't 
don't need? No. All right. I think it's done. I think so. That looks real smooth. Wow, this is uh, dirtier than I thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks pretty. Yay! Good. That looks so good. Good job, Mom. I can't wait to see the look on Richard's face when he sees these chairs. If I had more time, I would definitely buff this out. But I don't have that luxury. So this will have to do. I'm not going to lie. Since the new year, I had not been taking the best care of my physical health. I needed to start Accutane, and if I'm being completely honest, it destroyed my energy, face, and hair. Accutane is kind of kicking my ass right now. Um, can't really do much with my hair. It's been so dry and unhappy, and this recent flare-up is really, really kind of painful. And also, my allergies are acting up as well, so it's just fun fun all around. <laughs> Which means a classic 90s makeover. Pause, pause, please. Pause, please, please. <laughs> that was rough. Well, when you leave it so long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now with only one day left before my first flight to Vancouver, it was a literal race to my final goal. Run six miles like Casey Neistat. This goal had been hanging over my head since 2019 when I used his work schedule to get myself out of my rut. And every year since, I had only gotten to five miles. Stopped in 2020 because, well, you know, coronavirus, at least until the summer. Canadian problems. Then again in 2021, due to a knee injury that took flipping forever to heal. So I was determined. It's been hard for me to do a full sprint of a minute's hand. We're into 700 calories burned, and we're at exactly four and a half miles right now. So, in there. And it's been 55 minutes. Luckily, it's the knee isn't showing with a lot of pain. It's just more of like a, a fatigue. So, I keep going. Okay, I don't know what the frick happened. Like, I thought I clicked. Go back to four miles per hour, and then went on to cool down. So I'm gonna have to freaking stop. That's so annoying. Oh my god, I'm so close. I wanted it to say six miles, but I was done. Might as well go hard for this last bit. Only in a mile. One point. One one. One. No, no, no. How do I do this? Ah. We're gonna fudge it, so we're gonna go 1.5. Back to six. Next, start. Oh, I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I'm not like late, but for my first flight to Vancouver, but this morning, um, I've been kind of putting my, I was putting myself on robot mode, trying to get the last of my stuff packed because I was really stressing to fit everything. But, um, I haven't really let myself feel the feelings. And like, I know I'm coming back to this room, but it just feels a little weird to say goodbye. Cause it's like, I know it's not like for a two week thing. Otherwise I wouldn't be making this so dramatic. It's like my safe space, you know? Everyone needs a safe space. So I hope I can make another safe space in Japan. Oh, oh time to go. Time to go. 
okay. But when I look at you, I can feel it. <laughs> and and I, I look at you and I... And I'm home. <laughs> Bye.